so I'm sure a lot of you realize that in the time between hiatuses, there seems to be a location change going on, right? I mean, this wall is not familiar. I've recorded a video for my Mr. Walker 7 channel in every room of my old apartment, kitchen, bathroom, my room, my mom's room, uh, living room. It don't matter. I made a video. If it's a room in the apartment, I made a video on that shit. Even the motherfucking dining room said I made a video on that shit. But you ain't never seen this wall before. I guarantee it. So obviously this is a new brib. And it's been a new brib for about seven months. So I never got around to telling you the story about this. And I probably should. Because it's going to come with another rant or soapbox. A big one being the fact that I had to deal with some BS. So let's flash back to July of 2015. I was still doing Let's Plays while thinking up stuff to do for videos. And... I decided uh, I got like a little bit of a vacation going on. I was in my pop's rib for like one month and already some BS happened over there, which led to a Le Chateau Artiste actually, because I dealt with some shit, some scary ass shit. <laughs> Homie was out the window staring at me with like a teenage girl looking like he was ready to rob my shit. <laughs> like all squared up and shit. It was mad weird. But I come back the next month in August. And as soon as I come back, this whole eviction arc gets set up where I'm spending the next year. Well, mostly it's my mom dealing with this, of us getting bought out of our brib, and dealing with the court dates, dealing with looking for a real estate agent who's legit, who's not just a guy who is a real estate agent, but he's only talking to my mom because it's like, yo ma, let me holler at you for a sec. And after all this struggling, I finally made it from being a Heights boy, a person who lives in Washington Heights, to a Bronx boy. And I have to say, change is good. Because while I was very proud about being a Heights boy, I made saving my hood. I also realized I made that gentrification in Washington Heights video that there are certain things, there are certain changes that have to come. Certain things you gotta grow out of. And for me, it was my hood. 21 years of living in the same hood, the same one you were born in. I was living three blocks away from a hospital where I I came out of that shit and of course I had to eventually make my exit and I gotta say there are a lot of issues I have with Washington Heights that I can finally start to address now that I don't live there no more a big thing I'm going to complain about is Columbia, because I live next to a grad school. And while living next to a grad school means that uh, everything to the left of me was not the hood. It was a very nice, little expensive part of the city that was wavy. Whereas everything to the right of me was the hood, drug dealers, uh, guys that were a few 
They'll blast Bobby Schmurda 24 7. Everything to the front of me was um, constructing some bullshit. And y'all were hearing that in the videos. After they were constructing that big ass hospital building in front of me, where they were training them Columbia kids, they went back to constructing the studio, which was to the left and behind of me. Like if the block was the face, that was the ear. So they went back to construction. So I was never free of noise for three years as a neat living in the Heights. Never free of that. Always some noise, always some BS. But Columbia be walling. This is the point I want to get to. Because I'm pretty sure they're part of the reason why a lot of people who were living around me felt the same way. A lot of us were dealing with this stuff because they were buying so many of the buildings. I would be on my Hikiko Mori bullshit for about a month or two months. And I would walk outside and the whole hood feels mad different. It feels like the benign tumor, I don't even think it's benign anymore, of Colombia kept growing. Because they would buy more stuff. Like, I noticed the market district started to change. Suddenly, there was a third Starbucks in our area, inside one of, next to one of their buildings, with a Barnes & Noble's baked right in. There was so much that was being added to it because of Columbia. And that ass, like, I noticed it in 2009. But it's like, I would not walk out the bridge for a while from that direction. Other direction, yes. And I would notice it'd be much bigger, that Columbia section. And, by the way, since getting kicked out of the Heights, I've only been in the Heights three more times. Because I don't really care for it no more, not as much as I used to. That can change, of course. But, they got more shit. And a lot of the old shit is like, getting shut down. I'm like, what the hell is this BS? So that's some bullshit. <laughs> like, Columbia doesn't just do this here. Like, I go to Harlem, too. And I notice where Columbia is, like the university, that section is growing as well. It's becoming like a festering cancer. It, I use the term benign tumor. It's not benign. That thing is malignant. And not too long after getting out of the heights, I checked inward. And Columbia be walling there too. They stay walling. They got their nuts all over the city. At least uptown Manhattan. But I know it's not that way. Midtown, downtown, Brooklyn, Queens. But uptown Manhattan? Columbia got their dick and balls. And they skiing all over the place. This is a fact. And that's mad dirty. I don't like that. Other beef with the Heights is a lot of people there, not my personal friends, but just like people who be around the area. The attitude there, I don't really like it. But the people who got jobs there can be pretty incompetent. I've never been to an area where everyone who's employed is effing up somehow. And it's always getting me agitated. I'm always feeling some type of way when I have to go there to get some type of service done and nothing works. And the big issue is even personal people there, there seems to be this philosophy in the Washington Heights person.
whether it be a male or female, but especially male, where every form of a relationship with them is not for just one thing. In this case, if you're friends with a person, it's, it's not about the friendship. If your man is from the Heights, it's not for the cuffing. All of it is a power trip. All of it is first and foremost a power trip. And that's why we had to go outside to look for a good real estate agent. Because the real estate agent we were talking to first, he was a power trip. His whole thing was trying to Get us to put all our faith into him, like, okay, we trust you, but help us out. Why is it that we see you five times a day and you're not really doing anything for us? You're just saying, hold on, I got you for this. That's the mentality with everyone there. Nothing ever gets some because everything is a power trip. You try to link up with a friend, power trip. I don't decide when we socialize. Well, you don't decide that. I do. You, we can't come to an agreement. I have to say something and then you comply. If you say something to me, I'm just going to stonewall psychologically. And that's mad dirty. I don't like that shit. I, I don't like the philosophy of that place. Here in the boogie down, that's not really the case. People keep it real around here. And I like that. So those are my two criticisms of the Heights. I definitely still have feelings for the place. Well, even though I was never born here, I have a lot of history in the Bronx. So me going from here, from the Heights to the Bronx, it wasn't a very difficult transition for me. I was able to transition comfortably because of the history I had. Because of familiarity. I'm eating chopped cheeses right now. That's how I'm eating, man. Like, I don't get to enjoy the... What's those fried Dominican stuff? Like, quipas, pasolitos, the chu... Chuchi... I don't enjoy that as much, but I adapt it. And I like where I'm at. But I'm always going to be a Heights boy. This is a fact. It's just... Right now, there's a lot of bad blood. Colombia, the people, not all of them. My close homies, they as real as it gets. But just the general vibe. It's all left up. Is it Mr. Wonka 7? I told you this was going to be very old school. This was going to be me ranting, getting on that soapbox, going in. And this is one take only. So, hope you enjoyed it and suck my dick.